Welcome to our YouTube exclusive projection series. Today we are covering the AFC West for the 2021 fantasy football season. I'm John Bauer. Find me on Twitter at the Bauer Club. You know Mitch Sorensen. That's at DinoMC. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of the talking today mm -hmm. because Mitch is still waking up. <laughs> it's it's super early out there in Utah. We're recording this 7:30 my time. A little more convenient than 5:30 Mitch's time. Yeah, it's all good though, but like I think this is a really good division to start off with because Denver was so hard for us to even break down the first place. And then you get Kansas City and the Raiders and it's a fun one to go. It is, and I thought Kansas City and the Raiders for the most part they were a little bit easier mm -hmm. at least for the high-end talent. But before we do the we're going to start with the Broncos. Um, before we really get into it, I just want to say, go over the, the process that that I have in place and that, that Mitch has in place. So, Mostly you. You keep right. me in check. And, and that's exactly what this is. It's just like checks and balances. So I'm sharing my screen. What I did behind the scenes, and I started this last year for our projections, but head coaching history, and then I've hidden rows and all that good stuff. But developing a 95% confidence interval and you can see in rows 49 and 50 the the minimum and maximum uh pass percentage for each uh coach but if there's a small sample size you can see Cliff Kingsbury confidence interval 32 to 80% yeah. that's when you kind of have to just look at the range and that's rows 51 and 52 so this is just kind of behind the scenes stuff looking at overall pass percentage, number of plays, running back target share, wide receiver target share, tight end, the running back one market share for rushing attempts in in their respective offenses. And as you can tell, we're trying to go through this rather quickly. Uh, we have a lot we want to get through. We were looking at 20 minutes today. Might be a little bit longer, but we'll see how that goes. Also, I put together quarterback tendencies, tying it in with the running back, wide receiver, tight end, target share, and then the positional split. So running back one, running back two, where are the targets being allocated? And then the big discrepancies between quarterback and head coach. And Mitch, you and I talked about this last year. One example was Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. Bruce Arians, was he going to use the tight end? Tom Brady, was he going to use the tight end? who is going to prevail. So that was something that I put together, quarterback historical rates for touchdown percentage, interception percentage, completion percentage, same thing for running backs. Okay, that was that in a very quick nutshell. I think I did a good job of keeping that concise. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, the biggest reason for anyone wondering why John has a billion numbers, it's so if I love DeAndre Swift, and so I don't go in there and be like, hey, you know, I think he's going to get a 55% market share. He's going to get a 20% target share just because I'm a fan of DeAndre Swift. John has this in to take all of our biases out of there. So the running back one fits within this criteria. It doesn't matter if it's DeAndre Swift or Carry on Johnson. But I mean, there's the talent difference there that, you know, does go into account. But I think people know what I mean. Yeah. And it also you have to be subjective at times because if mm -hmm. you look at uh, the Ravens and Harbaugh and Greg Roman, clearly if you look at their overall numbers for passing percentage versus the last few years with Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. you have to take into account that shift. Yep. And there are a few situations, and I'll call them out, I'm sure, uh, situations where that happened. So hopefully everybody can see my screen here starting with the Denver Broncos, looking at the team level. So we went team level, position level, individual players. So if you look at the Denver Broncos, you can look and see, okay, they should be between like a 54 and 59%. And that's pretty precise target share for the wide receivers. And that's, that's a win. If we can get lock that down. Now, if we're going to look between the, the players, sure there's going to be some discrepancies and we're going to be off, but we look at the team level first and then the position level. So last year Broncos, you can see their splits on the top right here, 55% pass percentage, 33 pass attempts per game, 61 total plays. And then I did the same thing for 2019. So looking at it this year. And so everybody knows Mitch and I, I went in, did the team level, did the quarterback stats, 
Mitch drilled down to running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends based on the information available. And then I kind of did checks just to make sure mm-hmm. everything fell in range, making sure there weren't more completions than were allowed and things like that. So this is the first we're really having an in-depth conversation. Mm-hmm. So some of these are going to be, eh, well, yeah. we'll talk about yeah. it. But again, we're trying to keep it quick. So looking at the total plays, I had them at 60 Fifty-six percent pass percentage. Did you have any issue there? No, I think that's more than fair with Denver. I mean, right. and the truth is, a lot of these teams' total plays are extremely close. Like the really fast-paced teams compared to the low-paced teams, there's just not that big of a difference. I think most of the teams come between sixty-one and sixty-four plays per game, mm-hmm. and then also we, when I put this together, I took into account meal downs. Uh, I took into account uh, targets that were not allocated to wide receivers, mm-hmm. spikes, things like that. So if you're looking at this and you go on pro football reference and you look at the 2020 stats, you're going to say, JB, the Broncos ran more than 61 plays per game. Yeah. I, it might've been like 63. So I took that into account because, and, and uh, I had a tweet and then Scott fish replied. And it was pretty cool. Mike Clay replied too. I thought oh, that was cool. cool, but it, Scott was saying, well, you don't want to allocate targets to the wide receivers, tight ends and running backs that aren't really Real available. Yeah. And I, I told him, I said, we remove that from this. So, yeah. okay. Total plays quarterback. I put drew lock, Mitch. I'm sure. Li- listen, it's fine. At, this and, is only and, 20 minute long show. We can't do a lot with this. And I, right. And I want to say, these will be updated as the offseason progresses. We mm-hmm. get more information. These will be updated. So Drew Locke, everything kind of fell in play. 64.25%, 7.25 yards per attempt. So these are the inputs that we have. Was there anything that you saw here? Forget the name. I know you you went Teddy, but anything you saw and you're like, I, I think this is way off as is. No, I would. Maybe the interceptions are a little bit low, but he really hasn't been able to work with all of his weapons yet. And so we haven't been able to see this offense work as it should. So I actually think Drew Locke's probably okay where he is. I'm guessing he's really low in the overall quarterback rankings. He is. Let me see here. Yeah, he's is... quarterback 21. Perfect. Okay. So, so he is on the lower end. And if Teddy's sl- slotted in, mm-hmm. I don't see that being much of a difference. And if anybody has questions, again, we're going through this very quickly. If anybody has questions about, hey, how did you come up with this? DM us, comment on YouTube. Comment on YouTube here if you're like, whoa, 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 what's going on with these players here? Like, like mm-hmm. call us out on it. Keep us in check. Running backs, the way I saw it, Mitch, and I, I, I think you saw it as well. Again, I made some slight adjustments. Oh, and you'll notice too, games played for quarterbacks. Unless it's like a Justin Fields, Andy Dalton, Trey Lance, Jimmy Garoppolo, we slated 17 games. I know a lot of people try to take into account injuries. I We're, we're not that smart. Yeah, no. So we're not going to do that. Every other position, we did 16 games just because most likely somebody's going to miss a game along the way. Mm-hmm. Now, the running backs here, I thought it would be pretty close in terms of rushing market share with possibly Javante Williams taking over as the season progresses. Yeah, I think that's that's exactly how it's going to work. You know, Melvin will be the starter for the first 10 games, and then slowly Williams will start taking it over. And you'll notice rushing market share, we have 35% for Javante, 40 for Melvin, 12% for Drew Locke. Hey, that leaves 45 rushing attempts, as you can see in our little checkup here. There are going to be random players that get carries. Mm-hmm. There yeah. are going to be random players that get targets. So you can see we have 17 unaccounted targets. We have an other section right here. So this kind of takes that into account. So I guess more or less this, this series, quick hitters, just explaining what people are going to be looking at, because I fully expect after somebody watches this, Hey, let me check out the projections so I can actually go through them. Right. Yeah. So wide receivers, Cortland Sutton, Jerry, Judy, would it shock you to see them this close? No, I think that's if they stay healthy, they're going to be really, really close. But I I have a feeling that that catch rate is actually going to flip this year. But that's just my personal belief that 
Judy's going to be catching a little bit more balls than what he dropped last year, and Sutton's probably going to stay about the same. So I could see actually Judy's PPR raking getting a little bit higher as the season goes. But as far as what we're looking at projections, like I said, we're taking our personal biases out of here. I think it's uh, projections goes right where it should be. See, and for all these players, I look at their ranges and their historical information. You do as well. But Judy was at 46% catch last year. (laughs) So So I was like, I completely agree. I'm like, yeah, he's going to maybe not completely figure out those drops, but Mm -hmm. year one to year two, make some strides. And I thought 57% was generous. You know what the the tough thing with this team was? Drew Locke, his yards per attempt has been 6.6 each of the first two years of his career. Mm -hmm. But looking at the receivers, Sutton, Judy, Patrick, uh, even Fant to an extent, all high yards per reception players. We ran into that. Well, not to talk about him, but Daniel Jones was the exact same. Some teams, you just have wide receiver cores that average 12, 13, 14, 15 yards per reception. And you're like, well, his yards per attempt has to go up at that point. Right. So brought it up to 7.25. And to keep myself in check, where did that line up last year? And it wouldn't even have been top 15. So no, yeah. I, I'm like, okay, 7.25 significant increase, but is it top five? Cause mm. if it is lower it. <laughs> yep. Tight end Noah fan. And I think he makes strides here. 18% target share. If you go back and look at the range for the, the tight ends and their positional level tight ends, in a Pat Shermer offense account for 20 to 24% of the targets on average. And Alberto and Noah Fant lined up right in there with the target shares we had allocated. Yeah. And just to hit real quick, I was just going to mention that this brings Noah Fant is right around tight end eight. And that's really close to where he's going in dynasty right now. Um, just real quick. We'll have it pulled up. Sutton is like wide receiver. 26 so like a friend and wide receiver three which might shock some people but there's just so many wide receivers yeah. right now and what do you do projections you're slating it for the whole year to where i could see him lighting a little bit higher and melvin gordon's like running back 30 ish or something like that and yeah i'm gonna request that you pull these up just so because yeah, I, I got to keep going back yep. um and those are sorted just for everybody's reference those are sorted by points per game Mm -hmm. as opposed to total points so when we get into like the players like trey lance points per game significantly higher than his overall yearly numbers all right so uh i talked about the tight ends there wide receiver team level 54 to 59 percent again top five receivers here on your screen they account for 59 percent javante and melvin coming in target shares nine and eight percent respectively Again, my expectation, Mitch's expectation, that backfield goes to Javante Williams as the season progresses. And in Pat Shermer's offenses, 16 to 22% usually is allocated to running backs. And we have 17% here. So I I, I feel good with Denver. And again, uh, 20 minutes, probably a little (laughs) overzealous. I I giggle a little bit when he said that. But we can speed this up a little bit. Again, it's just to kind of go over our overall process. It's not to sit Mm -hmm. here and say, well, Portland Sutton, 1% rushing market share, five yards per carry. Like a pretty good voice. I like that. Thank you. Like we're going to keep this quick. So Kansas city chiefs, 61 play 60% pass percentage. This is the offense. I was like, this is such an easy one to do because 2019, 60% passing, pass to run. 2020, 60 to 40 pass to run. Patrick Mahomes, a lot of his numbers, he's in that 66 to 67% range, uh, 1% interception range. He's going to get the rushing attempts. but So we don't want to talk about Patrick Mahomes. He's good. That's information you're only going to get in the, the Dynasty only thing YouTube channel. I will say is he actually comes in as our quarterback too for the year. That will leave the number one out for a while, but he does come in and on quarterback too. Now that, so that was plus four minus two. Mm. If you go to plus six minus two or plus six minus four, it yeah. does swap. Oh, barely. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's like by a 10th. Yeah. It's yeah. It's so close. But when these came out again, we try to re- remove our 
biases and being a, you know, subjective with it. We want to be objective. So when some of these came out, like not to uh, get ahead for tomorrow's show where we do the NFC East, Terry McLaurin's a top eight receiver. Yep. I don't have him as a top eight receiver personally. <laughs> right. So that should show you as much as possible. We are removing our biases here. Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Mitch is a 50% rushing market share because that's the biggest thing here that I think is mm -hmm. a challenge for everybody. How much of that pie is he going to get in terms of the rushing attempts? 50 sounds good. 50 looks good. In my heart, I want him to get more, but I just don't think we could give him more right now until we actually see it on the field. I think this works really well. He had 45% last year. Mm -hmm. It's just like you said, Andy Reid doesn't care if he has to throw the ball a thousand times a game. Exactly. Yep. And they don't go to running backs most of the time. They love to one that run that little wheel route over the side, but that's really all the work that the running backs get. Yeah. So you'll see we did. And again, I'm not a huge Clyde Edwards Alaire fan. Um, I don't have him on a lot of rosters. So it's not like, all right, let's bump him up to make me feel good so I can sleep at night. Yeah, targets, 75 targets. That's nothing to scoff at. No, it's really good. But even with him getting 50% in this Kansas City offense, we have him coming in as running back 15. Right, right. So, and again, like, it's probably point-wise so close to, like, running back 12. I don't. I haven't really studied that, you know, looked at it too much. And maybe you could correct me if I'm wrong. No, but. there's there's a glut of guys from running back 11 to running back 14 that are within one point of each other. Right. And there's just not many options here at running back. Daryl mm -hmm. Williams giving, giving him a 25% rushing market share and then about 20 rushing attempts going to random guys. Tyree kill. He's been so consistent. I don't know if we had to spend too much time nope. on him, but the other running backs, I Michael Hardman, a, a little bit of a jump, 150 PPR points for the year. You know, you're not going to feel great putting him in your lineup, but no, nope. 14 team league maybe you feel okay exactly you're hoping for it i mean coming in like a wide receiver five for us and he's a guy to where i think a lot of these are going to come in certain games and there's going to be other games to where he's just gone right right can we say it can we get one of them oh there? he is a best ball <laughs> player i mean we name a lot of guys for it but he is a best ball wide receiver and really quick position levels uh, well, looking at Andy Reid, he has a large sample size, so we can oh. use a confidence interval here. 57 to 59% pass to run. So we're right there at 60. Running backs, 20 to 25% of the target share. You can see top two options on your screen account for 17%. Wide receiver, overall 50 to 55%. We have the top five receivers at 55%. And then 20 to 25% going to the tight ends. We have 23% going to Travis Kelsey. You can see that Mr. Noah Gray is not on our screen. I know a lot of people are hyped about him. I just don't see much of an opportunity, mm -hmm. even if they do go to a little bit more 12 personnel. So that's our rundown there. And then 5% going to other folks. Again, these are not final. These will probably be adjusted as the off season progresses. We're going to have some random cuts. I'm sure we'll talk about that with the NFC East tomorrow and Zach Ertz, hopefully possibly. And um, real quick on Kelsey, I was just going to mention. So he is of course our tight end one but he is 36 points above tight end two and 87 points ahead of tight end four. So he still has that dominance that we see, you know, every single year of the position. And I, I try and you try, we don't, we try not to look at the ceilings and project ceilings. Mm -hmm. it, it's very difficult to do that because I think you're going to overshoot your projections. 2020 Travis Kelsey target share 23.7. Catch rate, 72.4. Yards per reception, 13.5. Touchdown rate, 10.5. As you can see, we came in lower in every single one mm -hmm. of those categories. Slightly. Not a yep. huge you know, bump, but not looking to project the ceiling. Brought it down a little bit. And if you're in a 2 PPR league, you're still looking at 393 points. Yeah. <laughs> That's massive. All right. Anything else on the Chiefs here in this quick rundown? No, I think we we all know who to have on the Chiefs. All right. Raiders. This was a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was a fun one. So team level, 
coming off 62 plays per game last year, 53% pass percentage. Bump them up a little bit to 54% yep. with 61 plays per game. Any issues there? No, that defense is just getting worse. That offensive line is getting worse. And yeah, I see them passing a lot more this year. Yeah, so it, it, for this, it wasn't a lot more, but it was that mm-hmm. slight shift. And then a, a one more play per game. Derek Carr, he's always been accurate. He's always been efficient. Yards per attempt, actually a heck of a lot higher yeah. than I would have thought. So we have been 8%. Uh, historically last two years, 7.9 each of the last two years. So before I let Mitch go at it with any of these players, the position level, so John Gruden, Greg Olson, 95% confidence interval, 56 to 61% pass percentage. Running backs, 18 to 22% for the target share. And then you can see we come in at 20.5 for the top three. Wide receivers, 49 to 58%. We have the top four coming in at 49, so we're right there in that See, range. <sighs> oh, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk I, about I, it. I, I know you love him, man. I, he's not getting 14%. It's not going to happen. Listen, I am more than happy to adjust any of these. And then tight end, 20 to 27%. Darren Waller in there at 24. 24% for Darren Waller. What are you, you going to do? Like, oh, I love it. I love it. He was at 27.7% last year. It's probably low, to be honest. <laughs> you look at the rest of the team. He's like, hey, my top 30. And then 2019, he was at 23.8. So mm-hmm. I know we're kind of starting off backwards here, but brought him down pretty significantly for target share. Uh, catch rate kept him very similar. Mm-hmm. Yards per reception actually bumped him up just a little bit. And then touchdown rate at 7.5 down a little bit as well. Um, Yeah, we have him pretty much tied with George Kittle at tight end two and three. They're right next to each other. Right, right. So, uh, Mitch, have Mm -hmm. at it. Let me know your thoughts on Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake splits here, and then let's talk about the wide receivers for a minute. Yeah, with Jacobs, I think you have it really close here. The I'm pretty sure you actually did this breakdown on these guys because – this um, one I did. You you did not touch this one, so rip, yeah, rip it apart. I think Jacobs is still going to get most of the work, but Kenya Drake is going to get a lot of work too. I think market share, I mean, the target share is just going to be whatever running back happens to be on the field. I don't know if they're really going to be taking one off, but I don't think any of them are going to get like two series in a row of full play without someone else coming on to relieve them. So with this, I mean, Josh Jacobs ends up being a running back three and Drake is a little bit lower than him, and it's like people are gonna hate that Jacobs. Yeah. One. They're gonna hate it. I, I and again, the, like I, are you projecting him for a fifty percent market share, fifty five percent? Do you th- like is forty five thirty? Am I crazy for thinking that? No, I mean that only gives Drake one hundred forty carries on the year. I mean it's not a lot. He probably ends up with more, to be honest. All right, again, and and we'll talk about this. Mm -hmm. We'll update it as the offseason progresses, like I said. But 45% for Josh Jacobs, still a solid workload, Mm -hmm. still hitting 200 rushing attempts. But that offensive line, a lot of people want to say it's still in good shape. I don't think it is. Yeah, no, I don't Uh, think it is either. So you'll notice yards per carry coming down a little bit, rushing touchdown rate down a little bit for Josh Jacobs, just because Kenyon Drake, I've talked about this on Fantasy Football Confidential, I believe. Mm -hmm. Kenyon Drake, he's going to eat into those inside the five yard line carries. So yeah, that he, is he, a concern. he is the running back that is going to cap Jacob's ceiling. I mean, no longer can it be, Hey, Jacobs can get 250 carries and 10 touchdowns. It's just not possible. If Kenny Drake's on the team. Wide receivers here. Mm-hmm. Now catch rate. I feel good with it. Yards per reception, yep. receiving touchdown rate. We can flip and flop these target shares again. This is our first pass through talking through it. How how do you see this? I think Ruggs is going to be the number one wide receiver. But it's like I said, we take our personal biases out of it. The reason why I think this is John Brown probably is going to last the whole season. So I don't see him end up leading them in market share or sorry, in target share. Throw, and then, throw a number out. 10% for John Brown? I would say I would say actually flipping them would be pretty good. Going 16 for Ruggs. And then 12 for Brown. And then Hunter Redfro, he's going to be there at 14. Like he's just going to be the 12 to 16% guy for the rest of his career. Wait, 
I thought you said Renfro wouldn't be at 14. I know. Like, I don't like him, and I love to make fun of him for being <laughs> dust and not any good. You still don't want him in your lineup, but, I mean, as a slot guy, he's probably going to end up with more than 55 targets. But I don't know where you're going to find those targets from in this team. And we're only, he's only coming in with 144, 140 PPR points. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like I'm like, I don't run for a wide receiver one. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brian Edwards, I know there's offseason hype. He's looking jacked. He's looking jacked. (laughs) Brian Edwards, 7% target share. Bump it up, down. What? No, I think that's fine. I mean, he's a guy to where. No, there is room because we have six and a half percent. Yeah. And unallocated targets to other players. There is room to bump him up a little bit if you think it warrants it. No, I don't think so. As of right now, we'll probably this will be a team that we update maybe a little bit in training camp when we see a little bit more come out. But right now, I think it's all fair. All right. And it actually had the replay of the Jets Raiders game on NFL Network last night. Rugs looks good, man. I really like him. You you were higher on him coming out again when I there were there were some concerns analytically. You yeah, know I was a little stubborn, just a little. But I mean, God knows I've never had a miss, so no, I can I can never. make money. But 182 PPR points for for Mister Rugg. So we'll talk about this again. If you're watching this, throw us a tweet, DM us mm-hmm. at the Bauer Club at Dino MC. Drop a comment on YouTube. I at least within a day, I reply to every comment on YouTube or I at least give it the heart or the thumbs up. I acknowledge there's something. It. Yeah, there's something there. All right. So Raiders, let us know. This is one that I, I'm i going to go back and forth on Josh Jacobs a lot because I know a lot of people like our, our guys over NFL rough draft. Mm-hmm. They love Josh Jacobs Yep, and we're doing uh, co-manage FFPC leagues. We've taken him. So that's it's going to be a talking point for the next few months, I'm sure for us. Los Angeles Chargers. Oh, man. This love is a this fun team, one. man. I love <laughs> this team so much. I had to put Justin Herbert on the graphic here for YouTube. Yeah. But they 67 plays per game. Again, taking out the, the throwaways, 57% pass percentage. I couldn't put them at 67 plays per game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little high. So I dropped them to 64, which is still one of the highest in the NFL, and then 55% pass percentage. So brought them down about 2% with the hope, with the expectation that Austin Eckler is healthy for the entire season. That's my thought. And then before Mitch gets into the positions, and you know Joe Lombardi, you know him. I was just going to ask, how did that you know go into account with all this stuff with him? Now, you couldn't do the confidence interval because of the minimal sample size, but total pass percentage... He was 60 to 69%. But is that coming from... I have <laughs> Life to, were so bad. Yeah, yeah. So you got to take that into account. You have to think the Chargers play a little bit different differently than those Lions did. Mm-hmm. Uh, running back, 26 to 27%. Again, this is based on two seasons. So take that with a grain of salt. And wide receivers, 55 to 57%. Tight ends, 13 to 16%. And then 2% for others just because we have 12 players accounted for here. A lot of players projected for the Chargers. Um, All right, Mitch, who stands out to you? Who do you want to call out? Austin Eckler, man. Like, we have him as running back three, and he's well above running back five, so this isn't even like stuff's close. It's, I think, if he's healthy, and he's only getting a 38% market share. Compare that to someone like Clyde Edwards or Lair, who was getting 50 I, I thought I it's tried that to be target share that's you know taking him way over the top. Now here's the thing with the rushing market share for Eckler, because Eckler's been a guy that I've been acquiring all off season. Mm-hmm. So I, on purpose, maybe maybe a little bit of uh, me being subjective and bias came into it that I didn't want to put him too high on purpose. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, let's lower him. So may, maybe he does come in a little bit higher, but it was it's kind of like. You know, if people are coaching their kid, they're tougher on their kid than the rest of the team, yep. you know? Uh, maybe it could be 40, 45%, but I try to be ultra conservative at 38% for Eckler. Yeah, it's fair. Like you said, we don't want to, we don't want to get anyone's ceilings. Like, I don't want to be like, no, this is what he can hit, so this is what we're going to project him to. I don't like those kind of projections at all. I hate this one column. For some reason, that S creeps below... 
rushing touchdown. There we go. Okay. That just drives me crazy. All right. So Austin Eckler. Now I will say we have not projected the saints up to this point. So Alvin yes. Kamara yeah, that's could true. potentially knock Eckler down to running back four. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. Keenan Allen. I, I, Mr. Consistent in terms of mm-hmm. yearly uh, pr- uh, production, right? 234 fantasy points. Does that come into wide receiver two somewhere? Yeah, he's wide receiver 15, so just a really high end wide receiver two. But one thing with Mike Williams, I mean, we, everyone kind of glosses over him, and everyone's going to be talking about Nicole Hardman, right? I think they're going to end up identical to each other at the end of the season. And Mike Williams is going to cost you half of what Hardman does at this point. All right. So right now we have Mike Williams at 159 PPR Mm -hmm. points and Hardman. Hardman was 150. Okay. So I, and again, that's the first I've, you've mentioned that to me. So it's not like, all right, let's make sure these two are close. So Mm -hmm. Mitch can say this on the show. That's right. (laughs) But any issues here? No, and the other guys are just like Guyton's probably the best of them, but we'll kind of see how it goes. Take your best guess. I yeah, exactly. honestly, it could probably be I'm eight percent for yeah. Guyton, six percent for Palmer. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Again, it's not going to make or break your, your yeah. Season. But these guys, they really don't matter for season long projections. Their names really don't matter. They're just the three, four, and five wide receivers for the Chargers. We very well could have put them in the other category. I, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. honestly. Just had Mike Williams and Keenan Allen call it good. Yeah, so again, looking at the top five receivers here, total of 55%, and that falls in line with the Joe Lombardi, 55 to 57%. Again, just a range. Could it come in below or above? Absolutely, 100%. Mm-hmm. But that's, I, I feel most comfortable putting it in that range. All right. To wrap it up, Mitch, and not too bad timing wise. Yeah, pretty, pretty good not so too far. Bad. So yeah. far, yeah, until we spend an hour on Jared Cook. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Jared Cook, eleven percent. Donald Parham, six percent. I know a lot of people might think it should be flipped. That, this is where the uh, the not not even personal bias, but mm. our feelings come out a little yeah. bit. Like I don't care who gets targets. So there's no bias here. It's just I think Jared Cook, and we hate that word in projections. I think we want to eliminate that as much as possible. But here it is an I think situation. I think Jared Cook gets most of the targets out of this tight end group. Yeah, and even even if we're wrong, and it's Donald Parham that gets the eleven percent, and Cook gets six percent, it doesn't matter at the end because Cook's coming in as as tight end twenty five. So you could like these guys all you want. If he, any of these guys are in your starting lineup, besides the weeks to where they luckily catch a touchdown, they're probably going to tank it. Your whole starting lineup for that week. Right. All right. So tomorrow we have the NFC East. We're going to jump right into tomorrow. So we won't go through the less filler. Yeah. Well, hey, the the process behind it. That's not <laughs> very filler. important. That's I know. Not very filler. important. And again, this was super fast. We could have done an hour show on one team. We I think really- we did a four hour stream. Wasn't it four hours? Uh, I think it was about three and a half, four hours. Yeah. yeah. Last year. Yeah. That was fun. I had the dual monitor set up, but if you have questions, please reach out to us, drop a comment in the YouTube uh, comment section, make sure you hit subscribe. So you don't miss any of the other projection episodes coming out. They're going to be fast paced. A lot of information. Bring your notebooks, take notes. I'm John Bauer from Mitch Sorensen. And then Dan Lamagna, you know, from the Dynasty Theory team. That one guy. And then I'm going to give our, our folks over there, Fantasy Football Confidential, Linda G and Troy King, a shout out too, because this is the Dynasty Theory. It is. Fantasy Football Confidential YouTube channel. All right, guys. We'll catch you later. Thanks. <laughs>